transformers are composed of an iron core ring wrapped in coils. One coil is connected to an AC input voltage and is called the primary coil. The other coil is connected to an output circuit with a load resistance and is called the secondary coil. The two coils are well insulated from each other and do not form a physical electrical connection. This gives a transformer its unique electricity altering properties. Transformers can either step up or step down a voltage. In a step-down transformer, the number of turns in the primary coil is greater than the number of turns in the secondary coil. In a step-up transformer, the number of turns in the secondary coil is greater than the number of turns in the primary coil. The constantly changing current driven by an alternating voltage source induces a changing magnetic field in the core of the transformer. The magnetic field created by the alternating current in the primary coil generates the flux in the transformer core. The secondary coil converts the flux back into current flow and produces a voltage at the load or resistance in the secondary circuit. If there are fewer coil turns on the secondary than on the primary, this is called a step-down transformer. The resulting voltage in the secondary circuit will be less than the primary. In this example, we have 20 turns on the primary coil and 10 turns on the secondary coil. To determine the decrease in voltage occurring in this step-down transformer, we can use a simple ratio formula. This formula simply states that the secondary voltage to primary voltage ratio is the same as the secondary coil to primary coil turn ratio. Rearranging the formula and then dividing 10 turns by 20 turns, we get 0.5 multiplied by 120 V. This results in a calculated step-down voltage of 60 volts. In this animation, we'll look at how a transformer works. This is a typical oil-cooled step-down transformer. Transformers step voltages up or down. Electricity comes in on one side at one voltage and goes out on the other at a different voltage. On the outside of the transformer are a number of external components. Some help it to remain at a good working temperature, some help make it safer in the event of an accident, and some are used for monitoring. The radiator fins help cool the oil in the case. The conservator tank allows for the oil to expand and contract as it heats and cools. The explosion vent protects the transformer in the event of a major fault. The bushings insulate the conductors where they enter the case. The tap changer sets the exact amount of voltage change. The Buckholtz relay lets us detect the presence of gas caused by the deterioration of the oil and or a rapid increase of oil pressure. Let's look inside the case at the transformer itself. Within each transformer case are three actual voltage transformers, one for each phase. Each has its own conductor in and conductor out. A transformer is a laminated steel core surrounded by two different layers of wire windings. One set of windings has fewer loops of wire than the other. The one with fewer loops is the low voltage set of windings. The low voltage windings sit between the core and the high voltage windings. Let's see how it works. The current comes into the transformer through a conductor that joins onto the high voltage windings. This induces a magnetic flux in the iron core. This flux induces a current in the low voltage windings. Because there are fewer complete loops of wire in the second set of windings, the current sent out from them has a lower voltage than the one that came in.
To adjust the final voltage further, we can use tap changes. These reduce the number of windings on the low voltage side still further by changing the location of the conductor that leads out of the transformer. Notice how the sine wave reduces as the tap changer connects to fewer windings, reducing the voltage.